Hey everyone, this is the Jersey Streamer. I'm back here with another tutorial for Rend. So I've gone ahead and built up all three of these buildings. And I've also, just to get some of the uh, materials prefabbed before recording this video, I put down a forge works and a forge. But I'm also going to go over how to do a lumber mill and saw uh, in this episode here. I've already made most of the materials except for the nails which I needed this for and as you can tell I got some storage going down um, I would highly suggest being as organized as possible especially on the official servers you know you don't have to go as quite as OCD as I have here but labeling these things and keeping everything organized is super important you do, of course, need to unlock the base storage to be able to put these down. And I recommend getting that as quickly as possible. These have 42 slots each. And as you can tell, I'm not really using many of them. I simply have four down just to keep my own organization going here. But I'm really quickly going to show you how to create your first lumber. And you do that by coming to the hunter's lodge so you need two rough wood lumber or sorry you need one rough wood log for two rough wood lumber so I'm gonna come back over here grab some rough wood logs and I've already prefabbed most most of these logs so I'm just gonna show you real quick you come here and you can just right click craft however many you want and I'll just do one for an example. You see I got two rough wood log right there, or lumber. You don't have to put it in the station inventory. You can just keep it in your own inventory, which is nice. So I'll come back here, throw that back in there. And then add that to that stack. So this is all the stuff that I'll need for the lumber mill and the saw. Um, minus the nails, obviously, which I'm going to craft here in a second. But, what else would we need for this lumber mill and saw? Fiber twine and crumble stone brick. So, crumble stone brick, you can build here. You just need crumble stone, either in the crafting table's inventory or in your inventory, again. Just right-click crumble stone brick, and go ahead and craft however many you want. Um, each one uses four crumble stones, so just keep that in mind. Because some of these other structures that you're going to build will actually require basic crumble stone and not the crumble stone bricks. So I always try to keep a little bit of both. And what else will we need? Fiber twine. Okay. So this is something I really wanted to hit on here is fiber twine. If you go to your basic crafting here and craft a fiber twine, you get one fiber twine in that crafting time. And keep in mind, the crafting time you're looking at on this video here is boosted, so yours probably will not be that quick. However, if you come over here to the Hunter's Lodge and you know have fiber on, on you or in the inventory here and craft the fiber twine, in just a little bit longer, you get 10. It's much more efficient to come over here with some fiber and spam the fiber twine here it'll just get done a lot quicker and you won't be bogged down moving super slow the whole time so now I'm gonna go ahead and craft some of the nails so for the saw I don't need any nails but for the lumber mill I need 50 so let's just go ahead and start making some of these So you'll see it's making four at a time. Just keep that in mind. You know, wh when you're sitting here making these, try not to waste too many of the dross metal bars. You know, you may actually end up needing them for other things. So I only need 16 more, which I know, you know, four times four is 16. So, and there's 50. And then I can go ahead and craft this lumber mill. And while I'm here, I will also craft the saw. So as I put this down, I'm going to kind of explain the use here. Um, 
the a good example here is this forge works in the forge, right? This is where you can smelt metal into the metal bars that I already had in that station there. Um, I will show you the best places to get metal outside of the caves since low level the caves are kind of just uh, instant death. Um, unless you unless you go with a group of people, obviously. Um, so this is actually the only way you can get metal bars and then therefore nails to craft the other structures. So I highly suggest you put this one down first. And the other, the other refineries are kind of just a nicety, I would say. Um, you know, you can just craft lumber over here at this crafting station. You don't need to have this lumber mill and the saw down. It just makes things easier this way. The saw will craft the lumber on its own without you having to sit here and, you know, be bogged down by the crafting. So, as you can tell, they've kind of got like their own little snap points here. I suggest putting them out here in one of these two. And I try to keep the lumber mill close to this building just because this is the building you're mostly going to need lumber at. So, I'll go ahead and slap this down. See, I now have the completed lumber mill. The lumber mill itself does not actually doing it, do anything. I'm spamming F right now. You can't open an inventory. It's just a foundation for the plug that is this saw. So I'm going to go ahead and slap this sl saw down now. Now you'll see I have the option to press F and open it. Nothing in here right now. But to show you, I'll go ahead and grab some of this. And... I actually don't want to use this all, so I'm going to split it. And sure, I'll throw 50 in there. You do not need fuel for the sawmill. Some of the other refineries do need fuel, like the forge and the oven, which isn't really a refinery. but um, So you don't need fuel. You can just ignore this entire section right here. Having an offer on doesn't matter, because the second I start going to craft rough with lumber, it turns itself on. And you'll notice, instead of hitting craft all, I clicked it just several times. Because you can actually queue up three different crafting queues, and it'll craft them all simultaneously. Whereas, let me just cancel this. If I hit craft all, it does it all in one, and it takes a little while longer. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're not like pressed to get lumber this second. It is a lot easier to just come over and press craft all instead of you know, clicking this thing 30,000 times. So I don't really care about that because I've already got a decent amount of lumber over here right now. And so you can actually, in this lumber mill, put down two saws. There's a slot right here for one and a slot right here for one. I like to do it, um, I like to put the hardwood lumber in one, which is a, a tier two version of the rough wood lumber that um, you're going to be getting right now. And then I keep the rough wood in there. So this is just the kind of basics of the refineries. They're super useful, uh, especially for bigger factions where you have multiple people gathering the same thing. You don't want them to both or both or however many of them are doing it, you know, be bogged down sitting here in the base crafting, you know, a hundred lumber and they can't do anything else for the whole time, so you just, you know, bring your roughwood logs back here, toss them in that saw, and let the saw do all the dirty work. Now, I'm going to go get some watermelons real quick, and then I'm going to show you the good spots to get metal in the early game here. And you'll notice they actually patched it, so you can see when your tool is on there, it tells you exactly what tool you need to use, which is pretty fantastic. Alright, so that should hold me over a little bit there. The best spots to go get metal are, one is in this direction. So if you're at your faction base, it's kind of off of the corner where the Mystic Shrine is. And you just head up towards this little hill over here. There's also a convenient little, uh, I would probably call it a puddle, because it's not very big, but there's a little place you get water over here. 
by one of these trees. I can never remember which one it is. There it is. So if you stand in the middle of it, you can actually drink the water. And the metal is right over here. This is actually a cave, but metal spawns outside of it pretty frequently. Yeah, you can see it right there. The order and revenant versions of these rocks will look a little different because this is actually not really considered a metal rock. It's considered a flux rock. So you see my, the primary resource you get from left clicking is flux. However, if you right click, you'll get the dross metal that you need for metal bars, nails, you know, all that subsequent stuff there. You also get sparks of genius for invention, which is always a good thing. So I'm going to grab some of this. This one rock will probably fill my inventory up. And in the other uh, starting areas, this rock will be in the same exact location. It'll just be colored differently. Just make sure you go up to it, right click, and you'll get yourself some dross metal. The flux will come into play later on, so I don't really pay too much attention to it, honestly. I'm, if I get bogged down and there's more metal for me to mine, I'm likely to just drop it in the early game. With servers with lower rates, you may be uh, hesitant to do that, because the flux, uh, bronze and, or sorry, flux, tin, and copper are each respective to one of the factions, and you actually have to travel to the other faction's areas to be able to craft bronze, which is the tier 2 metal. But that is for a later time. I'm not going to explain that just yet. So I'm going to come over to this forge, drop all this metal in there, and I will throw these logs in. I'll throw the flux in here too, but I, it's just going to sit there for now. And again, you can just craft all, or in this case, because it's using fuel, I want to be as efficient as possible. I'm going to sit here and spam this button and get the three separate queues going. Now the fuel rates on this server are not boosted at all, so generally, I haven't really paid a ton of attention to it, but I generally try to queue up just a little over how many metal bars I have ruffled logs in here. Uh, the ruffled logs are the best source of fuel for this, for your low level right now. Um, so I'm going to stick with 65 in each, in each one of these. That should, you know, allow me to burn all of this off without wasting any and getting all the the ingots that I wanted there, or the metal bars, I should say. What else? Okay, so I can show you the other spots to get metal. If you go to the Hunter's Lodge and go off the corner of that, there is metal up on this little hill here sometimes. A lot of the times I've noticed it's actually silver ore, which is useful uh, to gather now just to have it for later. But it doesn't always spawn up here, so let's see. See if we get lucky or not. Ah, there's some. This is actually silver ore, you can tell because it's a little bit more blocky and a little bit lighter in color. So if you left click, you see I'm getting silver ore and I got a pure silver nugget, which is pretty much just like a bonus material that uh, will craft five silver bars instead of the single one that a normal silver ore does. And it looks like that was all the ore over here. The caves have the best deposits of metal and stuff. Like if I went in this cave right now, there is a ton of metal in here. There's actually, this rock right here does spawn occasionally as metal and you can get that without wandering in and dealing with, let's see what we got in here, that bear right there. It's not really a bear, I guess, but it it's a Ursa Mauler. And I really don't want to deal with it because it is level 13, it has tons of health, 
does tons of damage and it will completely wreck me. But you can see that's metal, that's metal, that's metal, that's metal, that's metal, that's metal. And those right there are quartz, which are also very important. And you can see around the corner here before it starts getting super dark, there's tons of metal in there. And just to show you here, when you go too far into a cave, it actually gets really dark and you will need a torch to be able to see anything at all. Unless you're real, you have a really good sense of direction and you can get in and out without being killed by that thing, first of all, and you know, get, get in and out without getting lost. So I don't know if that bear just aggroed me. Oh, it did. And you gotta be careful. In this cave in particular, for whatever reason, you get stuck right along this ridge. The bear does too, most of the time, but it does break free at some point, so I would recommend not relying on that all the time. And you could tell that bear is rather angry right now, so I'm gonna hightail it out of here. So that was another metal location there, and then the last one that I know of um, that's you know relatively close going to be off in this direction actually so you go to the construction shop and not that one though I do think some metal spawns in that direction uh, it's a little bit further into the stag woods that you probably don't want to venture in that far just yet because the wolves in there are a lot higher level than the wolves out here um, I say a lot it's really only two but it makes it make, makes a pretty big difference when uh, you know, you're dealing with makeshift bows and stuff like that. So the other one, you want to come this way along this hill here. While my stamina regenerates here, I'm going to grab some more watermelons. The, I'm going to put the oven up next because this watermelon uh, nonsense is getting rather annoying. Alright, and so there you see... It's a shame I can't get into the spirit world right here. But here you see, you've got this massive metal rock. This is another one that will probably fill up your entire inventory. My inventory is boosted on this server, and it'll still probably fill up mine. Yep, we're rapidly getting there. And there it goes. So there's actually three rocks right here. These spawn fairly often. Um, it's a pretty reliable source. And then there's t some just like sporadically strewn about over here as well. So you see some right here. There is three right here. And I want to say another one normally spawns up over here somewhere. Now there's one down there too actually. Right there. Straight ahead. And yep, here we go. There's two more over here. These smaller ones won't fill up your inventory, but if you get enough of them, obviously you're going to fill up your inventory at some point. So just to get your bearings here again, this is, if you're coming from the faction hub down to the lake, once you're at the lake, you go right into this valley here, and you'll see all the metal. Watermelons for days. Tons. I've eaten like 60 watermelons and I still do not have half my food full. Those are the three best spots up until your group or you know you solo are able to clear the caves. Uh, not every cave has one of those super killer bears in it. Some of them have wolves, spiders, and the Banshees, which 
I have not seen one of yet. Will also spawn in there. Uh, the, sp the spiders and banshees are not too hard to deal with. If you find a cave that has spiders and banshees in it, and you have spiders or banshees in it, and you have a couple people with you, you could probably try taking it on. As long as whoever gets aggroed uh, kind of just runs away from them, that will allow you allow the rest of the people to, you know, shoot it without fear of dying. Uh, it does switch aggro, so just be aware of that as well. All right, so we've got the forge up, got the sawmill up. Let's come over here and make an oven so we can deal with this food situation better. And where is this thing? I always forget where it is. Oh, it's right there. So I need 10 hardwood log and 10 cement. I hope this thing isn't done crafting all these hardwood logs. It is. So I'll need to get some more hardwood logs. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you how to make cement, even though I already have some created. So 10 hardwood logs and... How much cement was it? Ten. So sticky sap, and I just need ten logs. Logs will be super easy, but I am going to get a bunch of logs so that I have some spare lying around. Plus, I'll need the sticky sap, so it's kind of a win-win. If you're just trying to farm sticky sap, I definitely recommend left clicking because the logs fill up your inventory or your weight space a lot quicker than the rough wood stick will. So you can see my weight is barely moving as I'm cutting down these trees when I'm left clicking. However, if I come over here and right click, it instantly starts going up. These little trees will give you rough wood sticks and uh, the sap as well, but it's just easier to come over to the big ones. How much sap do I have? 33? I need a little bit more than that. I'd like to make some extra cement if possible. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. So, for the cement, you need the sap, you'll need some crumble stone, and you will also need water. So how do you get water from the lake up to your base? Come down here and you craft rough hide water skins. So for that you need 12 thin leather scraps and two fiber twine each. I've already actually crafted two down here, so I'm not gonna go over crafting them. Uh, it's the same as everything else, just you know, get the materials, click here or right click, craft however many you want. Uh, I like having two because these actually leak, and they leak pretty rapidly until you've researched better ones. So having two kind of offsets the leaking. And to actually get the water back and into your water skins here, all you have to do is go to the water and press F. That you will drink, and that will also fill up your water skins. So now I'm going to run back. You kind of want to just beeline straight for the construction shop after you've drank the water. This way you, you know, prevent as much loss to leak as possible. Come in here. Make sure you also have crumble stone either in your inventory or in the uh, station's inventory. For whatever reason, this is still grayed out, but I'm able to craft some because it, it does say I have water. and I actually need hardwood log for that. So that's a whole nother beast altogether. I will show you where to get that here as soon as this cement's done. I know I can move around, I just don't feel like being slow when I want to dump this cement in here. Actually, I'll dump that in there as well. Alright, so we've got 
Got plenty of cement in there. Rough wood logs, or sorry, hardwood logs. Uh, if you come to your hunter's lodge, they're up on this cliff right here. Is probably the best source of them early game. Some sporadically spawn over there in that direction, but it's normally only one or two. If you actually go up around this hill and up to the top, there's a bunch of trees up there that will give you hardwood logs. So come up past the cave. And you need to just keep going all the way around. Be careful, there are normally wolves up here. When I'm walking up the hill, I like to not sprint. This way, uh, if I run into a wolf, because you can't really see as you're going up the hill. If I run into a wolf, I can just turn and run. You'll notice you get chilly up here. It doesn't really affect you too much. Uh, you can read the debuff down there, but it, it's not something really to worry about unless uh, you know you get chased down by a wolf. So these trees right here that look like, I guess, Christmas trees is the best way to describe them, will give you roughwood logs. You, or sorry, hardwood logs, if you right-click on them. Even with boosted rates, I'm really not getting that much because I'm actually using a Tier 1 harvesting tool on a Tier 2 resource. And I also will not get any of the Sparks of Genius out of this because my tool is a tier below what I require to um, efficiently harvest these. works the same with everything. It's not just the hardwood log. If you're using a tool that is lower tier, you either won't be able to harvest the thing, or you will not get any sparks of adventuring, and your harvesting rates will be a lot lower. Also notice you can get hardwood sticks from left-clicking this. They're used for some of the higher crafting stuff, so you don't really need to worry about that. I'm just going to get a bunch of hardwood logs. Since I'm up here right now, it doesn't make sense for me to just take this big trip and only get 10. My food is getting kind of low, but I'll show you another plant nearby here will actually remedy that just like the watermelon will. However, it's actually better <laughs> than the watermelon is. So Alright, that's enough for now. I don't want to sit here and farm this whole thing. So these plants right here with the red little berries in them, if you go over and left click them, give you I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but I like just calling it the yogurt fruit, because that word looks like yogurt. And there's one more right here. If you get these and spam all those buttons, you notice it affects my food and my water a lot more than the watermelons did. Do it. Alright, so come back down here. Don't fall too far or you will take tons of damage and possibly die. And while I'm out here, uh, I made a new bow. It is a makeshift hunting bow. I also actually got a critical success um, and got one with a bonus on it, which is that plus 14% accuracy right there. You can tell it's a critical success when you craft it. Because, you know, you'll be crafting these bows that will have their name in white. And then all of a sudden you'll see, oh, I got, you know, a green a green one, which is an upgraded version. And the plus next to it uh, means it's got the extra bonus as well. So you can actually see that it also does more damage. So you can see the difference there. This one has a plus, that one does not. Make sure I have the plus one out. We get some boar meat so I can cook that immediately when I put down this oven. Actually, you know what? 
Let's take on this wolf. So the wolves do that little leap attack first. If you just dodge to the right, or the left obviously, you can avoid the damage from it. I've got two stacks of deep wounds. That's something you definitely want to bandage. Probably survive it. Oh, I'm sitting here doing uh, the wrong thing there. And let's find a boar as well, because I think I only have the ingredients for the extra cooked boar meat here. Grab this guy. All right. So now let's run back to base. Hopefully, I can finish up this oven before I uh, all well this meat spoils. I should be able to. I've got 15 bull ribs, and I should have all this stuff on me. So the raw meat does spoil really fast. I recommend only grabbing raw meat when you're on your way back to base or if you've got like a campfire nearby or something. So come over here. We've got all the things we need. Go ahead and craft that. Got this oven. And I'm going to just slap it down right next to the fire here. So you open this up. I'm going to dump this raw meat in there just so I'm not carrying around spoiled meat when it does spoil. And you'll see here you've got all these options for all this different food. The stews are higher level for the most part. The rotten fruit soup is something you can do pretty early, but I'll get to that in a minute. So you see here, charbroiled boar ribs. I need five boar ribs and one essence of hearth melon. And for the wolf chops, I need one essence of gold poppy and five wolf chops. So I have actually prefabbed some of each of those. So gold poppy and hearth melon. Let's bring that back over here. And I will show you how to get both of those in one second. You see it's spoiling already, but let's go ahead and craft these. Pops right into my hot bar here. And I don't know. Oh, that. So the one crafting of this was a failure and I only got poorly cooked meat out of it which is it's whatever so I'm gonna actually just spam those cr poorly cooked meat so I can get them out of my hot bar and feed myself here and so these here both have their own little bonus associated with them you see max energy increased by 10 for the boar ribs and reduces the duration of bleed effects by 20% for the wolf chop all the different meats have some random bonus associated with whatever animal that you get, with the exception of the Vesterwig bacon, because it just says, ew. Alright, so now that I've got that, they spoil a little bit slower than the poorly cooked meat or the salt cured meat, which is another option for early game. You come in here, salt cured meat just requires some poorly cooked meat and rock salt which you get randomly from hitting stone, either left or right clicking, it doesn't matter, you can just randomly get them. They look like this, right here. That will preserve the food a little bit better than just the poorly cooked meat. However, when you do eat it, it lowers your water level a little bit. So just be aware of where your water level is before you're gonna eat the salt cooked meat, salt cured meat. And these will at least for a little while, hold me over food-wise. Now, to show you how to do these essences. So, you gotta come over to this mystic altar within the mystic shrine here. And you can see the essences are up here. Essence of hearth melon requires three hearth melon each. Gold poppy requires 10 gold poppy petals. Skogurt fruit, whatever, the yogurt fruit stuff. 
requires 5 and this other one requires 5 as well so I'm gonna show you real quick where to get all this stuff and how to craft it obviously the watermelons are super easy to get they're just right here and they're all over the place look at all those watermelons just everywhere I'm actually going to eat a couple so I can get my hydration back up there a little bit. All you got to do, pop them in there or hold them in your inventory, does not matter. Craft all. Don't need water or anything. Super easy. And you'll see that that's popping right into my inventory. Alright, so next, gold poppy we already know where to get. Uh, it's just sporadically strewn about, mostly in that direction. You could see some on the ground right there, actually. That yellow flower. Now, the yogurt fruit stuff I showed you was up on this cliff. Is probably one of the better spots to get it. So, all you need to do is go up there, grab a bunch, and run down here. Just make sure you do grab a bunch because uh, the yogurt, fruit, whatever it's called, spoils pretty quickly. And then the Bajorn Heather, which I'm also definitely pronouncing wrong. Here's some gold poppy right here that I could grab if I needed gold poppy essence. But the other stuff is actually these plants right up here. This is the closest spot to get any of it to the starting area. It's not a very plentiful spot. You'll see that there's only like three or four. Sometimes there's the plants are in the uh, cave behind me as well, but we don't want to brave that just yet. So let's just go see if there's any in here. Yeah, see, there's some right here. Bring out the sickle, grab this too. And there's a bunch further in. You can see it there, there. Where is that bear? There he is. So, get stuck on this cliff per usual. And then run back over to the mystic altar. And go ahead and craft the purple essence. All these essences are used for both potions and for cooking, so just keep that in mind. Um, it's really a good strategy to just have an abundance of raw resources or, well, and crafted resources just strewn about your base. Um, this way, you know, if you ever need something, you're not like, oh crap, I've got to go find this. You potentially could just have it somewhere in your base. So just to give you an example here, you can see this elixir of the fish requires two essence of gold poppy. So you'll need other things as you can tell, but having some spare essence lying around isn't a bad idea. So you're going to grab all this and walk it over to the oven because that's the only place I'm really going to need it at the moment. I have not researched potions yet, and I'm working on it. I just like to leave all the essences down here at the bottom. So when people come over, they just dump whatever uh, food they have in up top. And they can just go ahead and, you know, craft away without worrying about going to fetch the essence from over here. So I think I'm going to end this video right there, actually. We got the oven up. Got the first two refineries that I recommend building up. Um, next, I'm going to put up the quarry and stone cutter and you know I'm gonna go ahead and probably j just get up all these refineries uh, the loom the tanning rack all that stuff uh, maybe even get a couple multiples of the different ones just so that I'm not uh, sitting here killing myself crafting everything so I'll do that and probably pull up another video um, 
the next video is going to be the one that covers crafting. I'll sit here and I'll gather all the materials for a couple bows and just spam them on out so you can see some critical successes and all that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed and I, I hope these videos have been helpful to anyone that was either a little lost or new. So thanks for watching.